Welcome to the NEM Show, a special presentation from the NEM Foundation about our blockchain ecosystem. I'm your host, Alexis Trujillo. Today we'll see how Symbol, the new blockchain from NEM, is already making waves in America. This time was in the North American Bitcoin Conference, a Miami venue that held many important blockchain voices from January the 15th to 17th on 2020 in its seventh edition. There, Jeff McDonald, NEM Blockchain co-founder, delivered a very important message to the attendees. Symbol is here and will make a difference, powering possibilities in the technology and business sectors. We thank our production team for this exclusive video where we can see, from first row perspective, the entire Jeff's presentation. Now, let's enjoy it. For the new foundation, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jeff McDonald. I have been with the NIM team since 2014, and I'm super excited today to tell you about our next step in our blockchain journey. That is to introduce our next product. It's called Symbol, and it is a 100% new code, a new network, a new chain, a new name, a new brand, everything from scratch. And so. We have made some decisions along the way when NIM launched in 2015 to then start to code a new blockchain, and now I'm going to introduce it. So why Symbol? We believe that it should be easy for a developer to make a smart contract. We believe that you shouldn't have to learn how to write code for many years and have a PhD or 20 years of computer science history behind your, behind your belt. We believe that it should be as easy to make a blockchain dApp as it is for a first year developer to make an app. So if I'm in university and I'm learning how to code, I can make my own app and release it on the iTunes store. I can make an app and release it on the Android store, and it would work. We think that blockchain should be just like that, but not just that easy, but secure, and also the developer should have a lot of options. And it wasn't easy. It's taken four years of coding to get to this point. So let me try to tell you how we got there. There's also some things that we were really interested in. The developers, when they were coding this, decided it should be decentralized, it should be secure, and there should be a lot of utility, and it should be scalable. Now let me show you this slide. This slide represents my opinion. It's not the opinion of the NIM Foundation. Uh, this is, or any published article. But this is kind of what I think about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is very decentralized. In fact, 10 out of 10 decentralized. It is the most decentralized network and because of that, it has high security, and that's important. Now, security doesn't only come from decentralization. It comes from the quality of the code, the cryptography, the libraries that are used. That are used. But these have been battle-tested on Bitcoin, so it's also very secure. But the Bitcoin core developers have been very clear. When it comes to utility, they say that Bitcoin should just do Bitcoin. They don't want smart contracts to be in the core of Bitcoin. They said, if you want to do smart contracts, you can figure out how to do it on the side chain or some other way. And the Bitcoin core developers have been very clear that they're not going to make huge blocks. They're not going to try to make thousands of transactions per second. That they like where the scale is right now, and they're focusing on making scalability on layer two with things like Lightning. And I believe that that is the perfect approach for Bitcoin. We can use money for Bitcoin on the Lightning Network and do tons of transactions and do them instantly. Now, typically, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, Bitcoin's not scalable, so it doesn't do a lot of transactions, so it's not good. And their answer is to make their blockchain scalable. But how do they do that? They take away decentralization. They use a few nodes, they make the nodes very powerful, and then those nodes process transactions. But there's a problem with that, at least for me personally. Again, this is my opinion, but I believe that the reason why we are here is to create a network that minimizes trust. 
We talk about the killer applications and the uh, blockchain, but for me, the killer use case is to minimize trust. And if we're not minimizing trust, I'm not sure why we're here to do ICOs, to make money. I'm not sure. I want to make the world a better place. So when you sacrifice scalability or sacrifice security by taking away decentralization, there's no point. You're not minimizing the trust. You're putting the trust back into a few nodes. Other blockchain platforms are going to say that they want to be very flexible and they're going to make very complex engines to do smart contracts. And that has a lot of utility, but it comes with security vulnerabilities. It opens up a lot of ways for people to lose money. It also hurts scalability because these smart contract platforms have to use a lot of resources and almost nobody runs a full and complete node with a smart contract platform so that they can read their own data. Now there's a lot of ways that you can run uh, a node that has most of the data for verifying transactions or for writing, but not for reading. And so it ends up being centralized that one company provides the majority of the reading data. And again, I don't think that's a very good solution. So obviously we know where I'm going with this, is that we figured out a way magically to do all four of these things, but really it hasn't been magic. It's been four years of hard work. And one of the ways that it gets done is through our proof of stake algorithm. And it's not a normal proof of stake. A normal proof of stake, the rich get richer. You have your coins, you stake them, you get money, and it's a way for people to invest and there's not really in, any incentive to run a node, and definitely not any incentive to run a full node. At NIM, what we've been able to do with our new product symbol is to make proof of stake where one, you get a score for your stake, but two, you get a score for how you spend the money in the network. Because we believe that it shouldn't just be the staking of coins, but we also want people to be active in the ecosystem, to have dApps, people that are using the dApps. So you get weight for your stake, you get weight for how active your account is and the transactions that go out, but you also get weight for running a node. You get paid, it's part of your staking, to run your own node, and that gives you a bigger balance. And we believe that once it's financially incentivized for people to run their own nodes, that helps to ensure decentralization. It helps to ensure security, because the more nodes, the more security. And for utility and scalability, we've done some really interesting things. NIM pioneered an API-driven blockchain. Our transactions, our smart transactions, are done with APIs. And I want to take a moment to talk about this, because this API-driven method has been very secure. NIM launched almost five years ago, four years and 10 months. And in that time, NIM has secured billions of dollars in funds, billions of dollars in funds, and has made thousands of tokens on the NIM blockchain. And not one token ever has lost one cent in even one transaction. There's never been a vulnerability that has been exposed in the API-driven platform. And we did lose, uh, there was a hack of a half a billion dollars on an exchange, and NIM is really famous for losing half a billion dollars. But I just want to say, if an exchange gets hacked and all its Bitcoin disappears, that doesn't mean that it was a problem with Bitcoin. And if an exchange gets hacked, and half a billion dollars of NIM disappears, it doesn't mean that the NIM protocol had a problem with one of its contracts. So we have a lot of advanced features, and these work with plugins, as I was saying. We don't exactly have smart contracts, we have smart transactions, and the code for a smart transaction exists very, by a little bit of code that's very light, and it is a plugin. We have mosaics, these are smart programmable assets, and we have something called aggregated transactions and multi-level multi-sig. Those are so important. I'm going to give those each a slide in just a moment. We have metadata, which allows people to put uh, information, extra information about accounts and their assets on the blockchain. We have enhanced account restrictions. That allows people to make certain rules and contracts over their account. This account can do this. This account can't do that. 
And of course, we built in cross-chain transactions because we want Symbol to work with other blockchains too. Now normally, when we think about multi-sig, we would have a situation where it'd be like this. Me and my buddy and my other buddy, we have a company and we need to send money. So we make a multi-sig contract with the three of us and it takes two out of three to send a transaction. And that form of multi-sig is very good for securing funds and sending money. But what we've done with multi-sig is we've made very complex signing trees. So this is a smart signing tree. And instead of just using multi-sig to send money or not send money, you can put advanced business logic so your app or your DAP can do something very complicated. And here's another way that we do advanced business logic. This is called aggregated transactions. This is so cool. I've never seen this done anywhere else, and I'm really proud of it. So let's just take a minute and talk about it. Let's say Alice wants to buy a house from Bob. In the real world, how would that happen? In the real world, Alice would give money to Bob, and Bob would send her the title of the house. But wait, it's not that easy. I wish it was. Right? Buying a house ends up being an incredibly complicated thing because there's a realtor and the realtor wants money and there's a government. And what does the government want? The government wants money. And they want, what do they want to do? They want to stamp the house title to make sure that it's real. In NIM, something like this is a, done with an aggregated contract. It's a one and done contract. So you announce the contract to the network. It's announced and then people start to sign. And if we had a person, B person, C person, D person, and E person sign, it becomes one transaction in one block, and then the contract's done, and it no longer exists anymore. Now, if one of these people doesn't sign, then the contract times out. Once the contract times out, then it's also done. There's no continuing, ongoing vulnerabilities that last indefinitely. It's a one and done contract. And it can be more complex because you have inspectors and you have insurance agents and you have the bank and all of these can be added to the contract with conditions on what should or should not happen to make that contract go through. It is a unique way of doing business logic and it's all API driven. Our architecture at NIM uses these APIs but it's done it in an amazing way to make sure that we not only can write transactions at a high speed, but we can also read data in a purely decentralized API manner. So transactions are going to the peer-to-peer -peer server. This is processing transactions, cryptography, making blocks, and that's for writing data. A wallet sends to a REST gateway to send to the peer-to-peer -peer node to write a transaction. But what about reading? Actually, most of the times we're reading data. When you open your wallet and you see all the transactions, that's like 10 transactions, that's 10 API calls. Well, in that case, for reading data, we've included a MongoDB in every full node so that people can read their data in a trustless and trust-minimized way, decentralized. We have, after four years of development and a lot of releases, uh, we have now released the release candidate. This is available on GitHub. It's open source, fully open source, the peer-to-peer -peer server, the API server, SDKs, wallets, block explorer, it's all there. I would really encourage everybody to test out our code, look at it, uh, play around with it. Uh, as soon as it's fully uh, test-driven, then we will launch the mainnet. Um, some people have already forked this. Uh, if you want, make your own private network and test that. We're, uh, we're not selfish. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's here today and the mainnet will go launch very soon. It's not just about technology though, it's about our team. When NIM launched in 2015, we learned a lot about how to make blockchain right from a code perspective, but now we have also learned a lot about how to successfully build a blockchain team. So we've brought in very talented people that know what they're doing. Uh, I can't speak enough about how smart they are and how much work has gone into making the symbol launch to make us successful and to get real adoption and real apps. So my name is Jeff McDonald. Um, I guess 
NIM was on the top 10 of corn market cap for a long time. Uh, we were a regular there. And then after the hack, our market cap kind of went down. But I fully believe that Symbol deserves and will have a great chance of being one of the stable coins that you will recognize in the future and be familiar with. Thank you.